How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Altium Academy. I am your host, Zach Peterson. I'm also a technical consultant for Altium. And today, we're gonna do a little demo on the Monte Carlo simulation engine in Altium Designer. So in case you haven't noticed since the last update of Altium Designer, it now includes a very easy way to run Monte Carlo simulations. This is really fun, and it's a specific type of simulation that you use to experiment with how things like component tolerances will affect the performance of your circuits. And this is really important in analog circuits, specifically analog circuits that have very high Q values, such as high Q bandpass filters. So that's an example that we're gonna look at today. Let's go ahead and get started. So let's take a look at the schematic that we wanna play around with. So just a little bit of background. What we're gonna be playing with in this schematic is a way to actually generate a sine wave from a square wave. And one simple way to do that is to use a bandpass filter and specifically a high Q bandpass filter. So this is something that I actually had to do recently in another project, but I actually wanna discuss this because it's a pretty simple circuit and you can do it without any op amps. You can do it just with an RLC circuit. And so that's what we're gonna look at. So in this schematic, I've got my voltage source set up as a pulse stream and it's just a square wave pulse. I've set a rise time to it. Usually if you're doing like, you know, the basic square wave type of pulse train in a spice simulation, it's going to set the rise time to zero. Honestly, you can set it to whatever you want. But the idea here is that if you want to generate a, a sine wave from this, uh, this pulse train, you have to set the frequency where the resonance occurs in this RLC circuit to match the fundamental frequency of this square wave. And so by doing that, what this bandpass filter is doing is it's essentially passing just one harmonic in this square wave. And so if you're familiar with Fourier theory, you'll know that a square wave is essentially a sum of an infinite number of sine waves. The filter selects just one of those waves to reach the output, and that is the wave that we are selecting with this filter. So that is a basic way to generate a sine wave directly from a square wave. Now, the problem is, as we'll see, is that high Q circuits in general, whether it's a bandpass filter or any other kind of circuit that has a uh, frequency domain response with a high Q peak, that circuit is gonna be highly sensitive to component tolerances. And so one tool that you can use in a SPICE simulation to actually examine how sensitive your circuit is to component tolerances is a Monte Carlo simulation. So inside Altium Designer, what I've done is I've set this up. I've got my simulation source here. I've got all of my little components here and I've gone to the components tab and opened up the simulation generic components library to access each of these components that is in this layout. If you've never used this library, there's really a lot of stuff in here that you can play around with. It's a lot of fun to use, especially if you're doing any kind of analog circuit design. So make sure that you're aware of the options in here if you ever need to do some simulations with analog circuits. Now, to set up the Monte Carlo simulation, there's actually a really simple way to do it. What you can do is open up the simulation dashboard Board. So that's one of the newer features in All Team Designer. And what you can do is go through and just set up a simulation here. You'll need to make sure that you run through this verification step first. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna check your electrical rules. And basically it's, it's uh, checking for opens and shorts. Um, it's checking for some other things as well. And then the other thing that it checks is presence of simulation models. So the presence of simulation models, obviously you need to make sure that your components have a model attached to them. If they don't have a model attached to them, it'll flash an error here. Then in the preparation step, we of course pick which simulation source we're gonna be using. In this case, it's our one voltage source, which is right here. That's our pulse source. And then we can add in some probes. So we can look at like the voltage and current at different points in the circuit. We could also look at the power, or if we had say a number of components in series, like say we had something in series with L1, we could use the voltage difference probes just to probe the voltage across one specific component. So I'm just gonna look at the voltage here across this output and then just for fun I'm gonna look at the current going through this circuit so I've got my probes placed and next I can go ahead and take a look at the settings for the simulation now 
We're gonna look at a transient simulation and an AC sweep. So that's the two fundamental simulations that we're gonna perform. And then we want to enable the Monte Carlo option. And so what the Monte Carlo option is going to do is it's going to randomly vary these component values based on some tolerance level that you set in these settings. So to access all of those settings, just click the gear, brings up these advanced analysis settings tabs. And then here, under the Monte Carlo checkbox here, you can just check that. And you can tell it how many runs to do. You can set the tolerances on different components. If you wanna just examine tolerances on one type of component, you can do that. So let's say you're using all 1% resistors and you're doing something that requires higher precision. You can just select this and put in, oh, hold on, there we go. Not 15, we'll put in 1%. So you can just do 1% here if you want. So by doing this, this lets you experiment with different tolerances so that you can check and see how sensitive your circuit really is to component tolerances. So some circuits are very highly sensitive and that is just for example, circuits that have a high Q value in one of their resonances, uh, those can be very sensitive to component tolerances, especially if you're operating at a frequency that falls within that pass band or that stop band. Now flip that around, let's say you're dealing with like a low pass filter. With a low pass filter, if you're in the pass band region, that particular region of that circuit is actually very insensitive to component tolerances. So you could use pretty loose tolerances on your components in that region and the circuit's gonna operate just fine. You're not gonna notice a lot of deviation. So this lets you verify that during the circuit design stage. So uh, for this example, I'm just gonna set 5% for all of my different components. And that's it, we're basically set up and ready to go. Let's make sure I got everything checked. And actually, before we run this, let's take a look at the number of runs here. Now, how many runs do we actually need to do to get enough insight into how our circuit operates? Well, what you would normally end up doing with all this data that you generate from Monte Carlo simulations is you can export all of that data from the simulator and then you can put it into another analysis program. Like, you know, you could just do this in Microsoft Excel you could go into MATLAB or Mathematica, whichever analysis program you wanna use. But the idea here is that you can take all this data and then you can run statistics on it. And by running some statistics on it, you can then find the link between your component tolerance values and then how that particular component tolerance value produces some new tolerance or variation in the output that you wanna measure. So you can find the link between those two and you could basically make a statement as to how big the component tolerance gets magnified or diminished in terms of the output electrical value that you want to measure. So in this case, what we're going to measure is the voltage and the current, and then we want to determine how do 5% component tolerances produce a, an output variation and how big is that variation? So that's what we're going to look at. Let's hit OK. And now we're basically ready to go. So what we're gonna do is a transient simulation. Here we're dealing with a 250 kilohertz wave and we wanna make sure that we've got enough time allotted here. We've got 200 microseconds, so that's plenty of time. Let's go ahead and change this to 100 just so we have a faster simulation. Then you wanna make sure that your step is large enough. We've got a pretty good time step here. And then in the AC analysis, we wanna make sure that we're covering a broad enough frequency range so we can really see the behavior of the circuit and how it responds to component tolerances. So first, we'll go ahead and take a look at the transient results. When you, this first comes up, you see a lot of curves that are overlapping. And if you look here on the right side of the screen, you see you have a bunch of different voltages. And these are the voltages that are being measured here at this probe for each of the 10 runs that we set up in the simulation dashboard. So here you can see it's 10 runs. And of course you would expect that there are 10 curves here. And that's exactly what you see on the top right portion of this graph. Then here, we also have 10 current curves and those are the currents here for this probe. If we just zoom in, you can start to see what that variation looks like. And it's pretty coarse here, meaning we don't have a fine enough uh, resolution in our time domain. We can go back and change that and rerun it. And we'll do that here in just a moment. This is looking at the voltage graph. We can also zoom in here on the current graph and you can really see the same kind of thing. So let's just take a look at the voltage graph just for fun. So on the voltage graph, if we just zoom into a few of these oscillations, we can really see how these different component tolerances affect the voltage that's being measured at that probe across 
resistor number R1. So you can see here that we have variations in the phase and it looks like we have variations in the frequency as well. That might not be uh, something that you would expect, but you do see some variations here. Now, in order to see why you have those variations, it might help to then look at either just measurements in time to then check if we actually have variations in the output, or you can go into the frequency domain and see what's going on. You also see there's variations in the amplitude. And so the answer to why that occurs, we'll see if we look in the frequency domain. First, let's take a look at the what you can do if you have this situation where you can see here it's kind of chunky and you can see all the individual data points. What you can do to fix that is here in this time step, it's set to 160 nanoseconds by default. We can just go ahead and set this to 16, 10 times high resolution. If we just hit run again, it's gonna take a minute to run, but now you can see you've got some really clean waves here. It actually didn't take that long to produce all of these results. So here I'm just gonna delete the current again, and you can see very nicely what the variation in this output is. So we have a variation in the output amplitude that is uh, almost 200 millivolts, or no, about almost 150 millivolts. So pretty decent variation when you compare it to the nominal voltage. So that's probably a little more than, little more than 5%. That 5% variation in the component values translates to about 5% variation on the output. Sometimes that can be magnified, sometimes it can be diminished, just depends on what's going on with the circuit. So now to really see what's going on in the frequency domain, just go over to the AC sweep. Um, again, we're using a 250 kilohertz wave. That's the region that we care about. And so we wanna make sure that our start and end frequency overlaps with that frequency range. You also wanna make sure that you set enough points per decade or points per octave. Essentially, that's gonna say between Frequency A and frequency B, you have a certain number of data points that you're using for this calculation. That's gonna determine how smooth your graph is and how easy it is to see the results and make sure that they're not all chunky like we saw before. So here, if I just click run, there we go. So we see two sets of curves coming out here, right? Again, we have all of our voltage curves and all of our voltage curves are very nice and easy to see. You can see that they're all these kind of purplish colors and they reach a peak just as we expect. And then you can see here we have a set of current curves as well. So I just want to focus on the voltage here just for a moment. We'll go ahead and delete that axis. And then here if I zoom in near the top, you can see here that if we look near the top, we can see the variation in the resonant frequency. This variation in the resonant frequency, pretty easy to see just by looking where these peaks are. So you can see these peaks are separated pretty heavily. This circuit is pretty sensitive to variations in component values. So here I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and then I'll just adjust the scale here. So we're gonna set this from 200K to 300K and we use a linear grid and then we'll make the division size Let's make it 10K. So now we can really see what the variation is in this frequency where the resonance occurs. In fact, let's zoom in just a little bit further so we can see this a bit more clearly. So if we zoom in, we can really see what the variation is. And you can see here that it's varying anywhere from about 245 kilohertz to 260 kilohertz. So this is a pretty wide variance. And you can see that this might not be desirable if you needed to generate a sine wave right at 250 kilohertz with a very specific amplitude. So this is the reason that we get this amplitude variation for this circuit. When we have the Monte Carlo simulation run, you can see here that the results all overlap each other in terms of where the peaks occur versus where the slope occurs. And so for example, if we were to put in a wave right at 250 kilohertz, this particular curve that's been highlighted, um, you'll see here, it lists the, very in, the various component values along the bottom for this simulation. And you see that the output is actually a bit lower than what we would expect. So we're putting in a five volt pulse, but the output that we get is right at about 4.75 volts. So we lose a little bit of voltage here. It's about 5% just due to the component tolerances. So that's what you can see here in this simulation. It's really nicely showing you exactly how the component tolerances uh, will affect the output from this circuit. 
What can you do if you want to look at just one component and how it affects the output from like this type of circuit? Well, then what you would do is instead of Monte Carlo, you would do sensitivity analysis or you would do a sweep. If you actually go into the sensitivity tab on this dialog, you can actually set deviations for specific components. And this is something we'll get into in another video because we've been going on for a little bit in this video just looking at this stuff. And it is a lot of fun to play with this to see how your circuits respond to different uh, levels of tolerance. But from this dialog, this is where you would then vary specific components over a certain range. And then you could really analyze how they affect the performance of your circuits. All right, everybody. Thanks for taking the time to watch this. Make sure to tune in for the upcoming video where we look at sensitivity analysis because that one is going to be a lot of fun. And make sure to use this type of tool the next time you need to qualify any circuit that you think might be very sensitive to variations in component tolerances. All right, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. Make sure to leave your comments and questions in the comments section. We love getting your comments and questions. Make sure to send your Q&A questions over to YouTube at allteam.com and we'll see you next time. And last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks.